equally as important as texture and length is the color of the adult coat. The coat must have two colors, a dark steel blue and a clear, rich gold. There may be variations in shades of either color, as illustrated by this group of correctly colored Yorkshire Terriers. However, you should not see any hint of black or silver in the steel blue color, or any gray or black hairs in the gold. Yorkie puppies are born black and tan, like this one. As the dog matures, the blue color will gradually emerge, although it may still be intermingled with the black of the puppy coat. If we look more closely, we can see that the emerging blue hairs still have black tips. When you're judging Yorkies, there's no need to part the coat at the shoulder or hip to check for emerging blue color. The best way to judge the emerging blue is to look down at the dog's back like this or you can extend the coat straight out from the body. This lighter blue is less desirable than the dark steel blue, but still falls within the accepted range. Here is the correct steel blue coloring on a mature Yorkshire Terrier. This dog also exhibits the correct gold coloring. Gold markings should be clear and distinct from the blue. The gold is shaded, that is, the gold hairs are darker at the roots. The color itself has often been described as that of a new gold coin. It is not ginger, rust, orange, or red. The gold on this puppy is too light. While common on a dog of this age, it would be penalized in a mature dog. These dogs all have acceptable shadings of gold. Now, let's discuss the placement of the blue and gold on the body. The blue extends over the body from the back of the neck to the end of the tail. It forms a mantle behind the ears. The hair on the tip of the tail is darker. Gold appears on the head, but must not extend down the back of the neck. The gold should not show through the blue above the elbow or above the stifle joint. It's deeper in color at the sides of the head, the base of the ears, and on the muzzle. The chest and legs are a bright, rich gold. This dog's gold markings are not in keeping with what we've just described. It's what's termed running gold. That is, gold which extends into the blue. Again, here are the correct Yorkshire Terrier markings. Let's review them once more. Blue appears over the body from the back of the neck to the end of the tail. The tip of the tail is darker. Gold appears on the head, chest, and legs, on the underside of the tail, and on the breeches. Proper coat texture and length will not obscure the dog's conformation as he moves. The Yorkie should move in a sprightly, self-important manner. Here's an example of correct gait. In slow motion, you can see that the dog's legs move in parallel planes. On this young dog, you can see that the rear feet are moving in a straight line behind the front feet. Seen from the front, there should be no sign of crossing over, but the legs may tend to converge toward a center line of gravity. This correct movement can also be seen on a mature dog in full coat. Too much coat, however, will get in the dog's way. He will swing his front feet out to the side to avoid stepping on it. From the rear, the legs should provide a straight column of support from hip to hock. 
a Yorkshire Terrier gating with tail down really lacks terrier sparkle and verve. This correct gait is free and confident. The top line remains firm and level. Although there are no size disqualifications in the standard for the Yorkshire Terrier, he should ideally not exceed seven pounds in weight. Remember that the Yorkshire Terrier should never appear to be coarse or heavy. But even though this is a toy dog, it should never be weedy or fragile. Head, coat, color, and balance typify the Yorkshire Terrier. The Yorkshire Terrier is one of the most popular of toy breeds. He's a playmate, a loyal companion, a consummate ham. But above all, he exhibits the feistiness of a true terrier. Small wonder he holds such a special place for so many. <laughs>